At 10.35 on the night of August 28, 2008, a huge explosion rocked the Bayer Crop Science Plant in Institute, West Virginia. The blast startled residents for miles around, including those in nearby Charleston, the state's largest city. Flames lit up the night sky as fire erupted from the plant. My wife said, there aren't fireworks tonight, are there? You could hear this long grumble, and then the window shook. I heard an explosion, didn't know what it meant, and within seconds, my staff was calling me, saying, we don't know what's going on, but get out here. And we really didn't know much more for a long, long, long time. Witnesses described a chaotic scene. Emergency responders were refused critical information about the accident by Bayer officials, delaying a shelter-in-place order for 40,000 residents. Fires continued to burn unidentified chemicals for four hours. Two workers died from injuries suffered in the blast, and the community would soon learn the consequences could have been even more severe had an above-ground storage tank of the highly toxic chemical methyl isocyanate, or MIC, been breached. That is the same dangerous chemical that was released during the catastrophic 1984 accident in Bhopal, India. The community surrounding Bayer Crop Science have been concerned for decades about the MIC stored there. Its presence adding even more gravity to the series of safety lapses that we found preceded the tragedy. And when the accident occurred, the company refused to give out critical information to responders and the public. The Bayer Crop Science Plant is a large chemical complex of more than 400 acres on the Kanawha River near Charleston. It is located in a populated area next to West Virginia State University. Bayer operated a number of manufacturing units using highly toxic chemicals, including MIC, to produce carbamate pesticides and other products. One unit located adjacent to a 6,700-gallon capacity storage tank of MIC used a series of chemical reactions to synthesize the pesticides methamyl and larvin. During the summer of 2008, the methamyl larvin unit was shut down for several months of scheduled maintenance, a major control system upgrade, and replacement of a 25-year-old pressure vessel called the residue treater. Inside this vessel, Residual methamyl was decomposed at a high temperature. The waste solvent then used as fuel elsewhere in the plant. This process released heat and needed to be carefully controlled to prevent a runaway reaction. Bayer was eager to bring the unit back online to meet increased demand for larvin, with workers putting in extended hours to get the job done. A decision was made to restart the unit, but this was premature. Workers faced numerous equipment problems. The new computer control system had not been fully calibrated and was not ready for use. This made the startup particularly risky. Five days into the startup of the unit, the residue treater was brought online. For safety reasons, the vessel needed to be pre-filled with clean solvent and heated to prevent a dangerous accumulation of reactive methamyl during startup. A safety interlock would prevent methamyl residue from being fed to the vessel if the temperature was too low. But some operators believed the heater could not reach the required temperature to open the valve. Contrary to operating procedure and with manager's knowledge, operators used a password to bypass the safety interlock. This routine workaround increased the likelihood of a runaway reaction. Other equipment problems diverted the operator's attention, and on the day of the accident, they mistakenly did not pre-fill the vessel with solvent. Adding to the dangers, problems with the crystallizer raised the concentrations of methamyl in the residue significantly above the safe operating limit. During the day, the overconcentrated methamyl inside the vessel began to decompose, releasing heat. As the temperature climbed, the rate of the decomposition reaction increased rapidly. By 10 p.m., the temperature was approaching the safety limit. At 10.17, the pressure began to climb quickly, unnoticed by the board operator who was dealing with other equipment problems. At 10.25, the residue treater high pressure alarm sounded. 
The board operator mistakenly believed pressure was increasing because the vent pipe had become blocked, as had occurred many times in the past. He radioed two outside operators to check the vent pipe and set the vessel cooling system to full, but the runaway reaction could not be controlled. At 10.33 p.m., the residue treater violently ruptured. The vessel careened into the production unit, ripping out piping, electrical conduit, and a large structural column. More than 2,200 gallons of flammable and toxic material sprayed in all directions. A massive fire erupted. Other debris struck a protective steel mesh surrounding the storage tank, which contained 13,700 pounds of methyl isocyanate. The two workers who had been checking the vessel's vent pipe were fatally injured. The Bayer in-house fire brigade responded immediately. They doused the MIC tank shield structure with water to protect it from the heat, but the fires burned for more than four hours. Concerned and fearful citizens flooded 911 with calls, but 911 operators were unable to find out from Bayer what had happened in the immediate aftermath of the blast. Managers instructed the gate guard not to release any information. I've got the county emergency services director trying to find something out. Is there, do you know what area of the plan or anything? Well, I can't give out any information. Like I can say we will contact you with the with the proper information. Carolyn Charnock is the executive director of the Kanawha County Metro 911 operation. But typically, we get information early on as to what's, what's the nature of the emergency. We didn't even have whether this was a person hurt, an explosion. All we had for too long was just we have an emergency at the plant and to alert the public. Joe Crawford is the police chief in nearby St. Albans, directly across the river from the Bear facility. Uh, we were just uh, hampered and kind of held back because we weren't getting uh, probably critical information or valuable information we needed from ins with inside the plant. After an hour of unsuccessful attempts to communicate directly with the Bear incident commander and find out what chemicals were being released, Authorities eventually instructed some 40,000 residents in a 10-mile radius to shelter in place as a precaution. Kent Carper is the president of the Kanawha County Commission. Had we known then what we know now, we would have at the very least ordered a preliminary effort to begin uh, evacuation. We would have at the very least ordered a uh, shelter in place with specific information. And actually, the list goes on and on, what I think we would have done differently had we been given uh, better information. Bayer reported that no toxic chemicals were released because they were consumed in the intense fires. But the CSB later determined that the only air monitors near the methamyl unit to detect toxic chemicals were not operational at the time of the accident. The morning after the explosion, eight individuals, including six firefighters, reported symptoms of possible toxic chemical exposure. Proper communications between companies and emergency responders during an accident is critical. This is especially true at a facility like the Bayer plant, which stores large amounts of highly toxic chemicals. The community here has been asking about methyl isocyanate. Well, Ken Ward is a staff writer with the Charleston Gazette. He has been reporting on the chemical industry in the state since 1991. And what we heard after Bhopal was that, oh, well, that was over in India, and you know, it really can't happen here. Pam Nixon is the environmental advocate with the West Virginia Department of Environmental Protection and a longtime resident of West Dunbar, a town neighboring institute and the Bear plant. There are a lot of lives that could be impacted from a major incident down there. And uh, when the community complains, the company downplays what the community says. And so they just feel as if uh, they're not being heard. Every couple months you hear about a leak here or a release there or a spill there. You know, nothing, everybody always says it's nothing big. There was no impact to the community is the, the standard line from the plants. but. People who have lived here and know about Bhopal and know about MIC always have in the back of their minds this fear and this worry that well, could it happen here. During an April 2009 congressional hearing on the Bayer accident, then CSB Chairman John Breslin noted that the explosion, serious enough as it was, could have been worse 
had the MIC tank been damaged. It was that, that very government affirmation of what everybody knew in the back of their minds that's forced a reform of what's going on here. In 2009, Bayer Crop Science announced that it would reduce the maximum inventory of MIC at the Institute site by 80%. And in January 2011, Bayer announced that it would stop producing, storing, and using the highly toxic chemical altogether. But there are many chemical facilities in the Kanawha Valley that handle large quantities of other highly toxic hazardous materials. At a CSB public meeting in Charleston in December 2010, the investigation team noted that resources are too limited at the Occupational Safety and Health Administration and at the Environmental Protection Agency to thoroughly audit facilities in Kanawha County and elsewhere. The CSB recommended that Kanawha County set up a program to do its own safety oversight of the plants. A model for this type of local program exists in Contra Costa County, California, a San Francisco Bay suburb that is home to many oil refineries and chemical plants. Randy Sawyer is the director of the Contra Costa program. Back in the 90s, there was a number of accidents that occurred in Contra Costa County. In the community and our Board of Supervisors were very concerned about this, and uh, they wanted more safety oversight of the facilities. They wanted to make sure the facilities were operating as safely as they could. As a result, since 1999, the Contra Costa County Health Services Department has had the authority to oversee the safety of refining and chemical facilities. Highly qualified county experts conduct audits and inspections. The plants must submit and adhere to comprehensive safety plans. The program is self-financed through fees paid by the facilities. Contra Costa's program has drastically reduced the number of plant accidents that occur in the county. I believe it is a model that can be implemented in other places in the United States. Uh, it's been successful, it's been highly effective, and it, it has, has good results. Effective process safety management inspections and audits are designed to expose potentially dangerous flaws in company operations and procedures, and to assure all equipment is safe to operate. Our investigation found this was not done before the startup. There were deadly consequences as a result. During our investigation, we determined that the bare startup of the methamyl unit was begun prematurely because of pressures to resume pesticide production. We found serious deficiencies in the company's process safety management program. This resulted in a series of critical emissions during the startup that led to a runaway reaction and violent explosion. The startup took place before fully calibrating a new computer control system, before operators had been trained on the new system, and before all equipment was installed or fully operational. The CSB also found that operators intentionally overrode an interlock system that was designed to prevent a runaway reaction. Human factors played a big part in this accident. There was a lack of enforced, workable standard operating procedures and adequate safety systems. And without these kinds of protections, mistakes would prove fatal. Many of the findings parallel those from the CSB's investigation of the deadly explosion at BP's Texas City refinery in 2005. In both cases, the CSB found that the companies permitted deviations from standard operating procedures during startups. These deviations were seen as necessary to get the job done. Both OSHA and the CSB have voiced concerns about how effectively companies have implemented process safety management requirements. To address the serious deficiencies found at the Bayer plant, the CSB recommended that OSHA and the EPA conduct comprehensive process safety inspections of the facility. Good communications between chemical plants, responders, and community leaders can help assure the safety of workers and residents during an emergency. But preventing accidents requires companies to have effective process safety management programs. The fact that accidents continue to occur 
shows the need for improved inspections and oversight, whether at the federal or local levels. Thank you for watching this CSB safety video. For more information on the CSB's investigation into the accident at Bear Crop Science, please visit csb.gov.